This video will explain what a mora is and how it differs from a syllable. By the end of this episode, you will hopefully be able to segment words into moras like native Japanese speakers. If you missed the previous episode on what a syllable is, you can click the suggestion above. This video will presume a basic understanding of syllables. First of all, why do you need to learn about moras? I'm going to give you two reasons. Firstly, moras constitute the basis of the Japanese sound system and how native Japanese speakers create rhythm in their speech. If you want to be able to speak and think like a native Japanese speaker, you need to familiarize yourself with the moraic system. Secondly, the written forms of the Japanese language are also represented moraically, meaning that each character of hiragana and katakana that we use stands for a mora rather than a syllable. So, if you haven't mastered the moraic system, you haven't truly grasped the essence of hiragana and katakana. Now, what is a mora, and what's the difference from a syllable? Just like syllables, moras provide a way to organize sounds into units. However, moras and syllables segment strings of sounds in slightly different ways. For example, let's contrast how the moraic and syllabic systems segment the word kan. Using the moraic system, we can divide kan into two moras, ka and n. On the other hand, if we adopt the syllabic system, kan makes up one syllable. How does this difference arise? Well, if you recall what I said in episode 1, a syllable consists minimally of a vowel. This implies that, theoretically, a consonant on its own cannot constitute a syllable, although there are exceptions. So the sound, n, being a consonant, cannot stand on its own as a syllable, and it must join the adjacent vowel, namely, a. So generally, syllables are broader than moras in scope, and they are in an asymmetric relationship, meaning that a syllable can contain multiple moras, while a mora can contain at most one syllable. This difference in the segmentation of sounds has implications on how each system creates and manages timing and rhythms in speech. Firstly, in the moraic system, each mora has equal length. For example, the sentence kantan dane contains six moras. Ka, n, ta, n, da, ne. If you clap once per two moras, then we clap three times in total, and we clap at regular intervals. Kantan dane, kantan dane, kantan dane. On the other hand, in the syllabic system, the length of one syllable may not be the same as that of another syllable. For example, the sentence from above contains four syllables. Kan, tan, da, ne. If you clap once per one syllable, then you have to clap four times in total. Kan, tan, da, ne, kan, tan, da, ne, kan, tan, da, ne. However, notice that the intervals between the claps are not of equal length, and in fact, the last two claps are sped up. So, which system do Japanese speakers use when they speak? Well, the answer is both. This is quite complicated and confusing, but Japanese speakers speak syllables to the rhythm of moras. To put it differently, the way we produce sounds is based on the syllabic system. So the sounds that come out of my mouth are syllables, whereas the rate at which these syllables are produced is based on the moraic system. We now proceed to the topic of geminate consonants. What do I mean by this term? Geminate consonants are basically elongated consonants, and they are represented in Japanese by the small t. A normal consonant is one more long, whereas geminate consonants take two moras to produce. Compare the following phrases, katta no ne and kata no ne. The first phrase, katta no ne, contains the elongated t sound, so katta no ne contains five moras. The second phrase, kata no ne, on the other hand, does not contain a geminate consonant, and the t in this phrase is one more long, so kata no ne only contains four moras. I'm going to alternate between katta no ne and kata no ne several times while clapping my hands. Try to feel the rhythm and pay extra attention to the length of the t sound. Katta no ne, kata no ne. In the case of the T sound, this elongated sound manifests itself as an absence of sounds. But how about other consonants like S? Listen to the following contrast. Osan, 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 osan. If you are still struggling to perceive the difference in duration, have a look at these spectrograms. The spectrogram on the left is me saying osan, and the one on the right is me saying osan. The S sound is a high-frequency fricative noise, and it looks like this on spectrograms. Notice the difference in duration. The S in osan is visibly longer. Consonants are not the only type of sounds that can be elongated. Vowels can also become longer, and longer vowels also take two moras. For example, oji and oji differ with respect to the length of the initial vowel. Oji has a short vowel, so this word contains two moras. Oji, on the other hand, has a long vowel, and therefore contains three moras. 
I'm going to alternate between these two a few times. Oji, 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 oji. Let's have a brief recap of what you learned in this video. 1. Morals determine the timing and rhythm of speech. 2. Normally, one syllable corresponds to one mora. 3. The nasal consonant, n, may form a mora on its own. 4. The duration of a geminate or elongated consonant is two moras. 5. A long vowel also forms two moras. Before we end this video, here are some challenges for you. Try segmenting the following words into moras. The answers are at the end of this video. In the next episode, we will try making haiku to really feel the morris. Initially, haiku was supposed to be featured in this episode, but I didn't want this video to become too long. Let me know what you thought of the episode, and see you next time!